I figured I'd catch you because you're a busy guy um, to do some some react content here. Oh, God. Yeah, fix yeah. your hair. I can't tell if I want the hat or not. I'm sorry. Okay, proceed. We've been talking about doing some Doug Lamov teach like a champion esque react content oh um, for a okay. bit here. And I figured I'd catch you off guard because I recently found a, a treasure trove of Doug Lamov teach like a champion videos that we have not seen before. These are not the YouTube videos, these are the, the vault videos. Um, in the fact, director's um, cut. The director's cut. This is the Snyder cut of this is Teach from like a Champion. Yeah, it's the Snyder cut. It actually genuinely is because these are longer videos uh, than the typical ones. Oh god! Okay. Um, you may or may not know, but Teach Like a Champion 3.0 came out um, a couple of years ago now, so it's a little bit dated. It's kind of the same thing as Teach Like a Champion 2.0. There are a couple new things, and I wanted to highlight a couple of these before we we look at this. So what we're going to be watching are these Keystone videos. This is written by Doug Lamov. He's the founder of Teach Like a Champion. So Teach Like a Champion is, they call themselves a behaviorist plan for classrooms. There are techniques like turn and talk to the people around you or no opt out, cold calling. The general premise of this is that every single kid has to participate and has to be compliant. Um, and that's... That's like their whole thing. They feel yeah, like if I, you don't let add anyone, to this? yeah, go ahead. Dog clicker training for kids. So it's like <laughs> the it's like the most you know behaviorist way that you would treat an animal. So like they do a good thing, you do the clicker, they get a treat, uh, you know that kind of thing. Right. So like full context, Doug Lamov is part of Uncommon Schools, which is like his brand of charter schools, which are almost entirely in the inner city. Is a cornerstone element of teach like a champion. And I think how most teachers know this is that teachers still learn slant and slant is Doug Lamov's thing. He, he's, I'm pretty sure the creator of that acronym. I, I think too, um, they may, they yeah. may have even moved away from that. I don't know if that's in three. They are. I'm going to get to that. They okay. just changed the acronym. So oh, okay. it used to be slant. So sit up, lean in, yep. ask, What's that other part? Question. I can't actually read it on here. I, don't, I, I can read that. it from this, from ask questions, nod your head and track the speaker. Yeah. Nod your head and track the speaker were always the ones that were deemed to be even a little much for some of these more authoritarian interpretations. The new one yeah. is um, star, I think. Sit up, track the speaker, appreciate your classmates' ideas and rephrase the words of the person who spoke so they know you were listening. I mean, it's um, still... Which is, Kind of the same thing. It is worth noting they did put it in this article. I didn't know this, but apparently Uncommon Schools got rid of both those things. Oh, um, yeah. Whereas Doug Lamov has kind of gone off in his own, th his own thing. But like the, the summary of this is that this is in the waters, right? I think on the one hand, you have the progressive or human-centered education that HRP talks about, which are all based in systems. So moving actually away from those dehumanizing things and focusing on like what engagement actually is. This was like, Kids right. partnering in their communities, doing hands-on projects, doing interdisciplinary work, uh, kind of making joy out of learning, as opposed to doubling down on this back-to-basics movement of drilling and killing information. What this precludes, then, is just asking kids, this is like, hey, Bob as a baby with his mom. <laughs> I don't need to see this. Um, when when kids, when you're doing teacher-directed activities in the classroom, there's the conversation yeah. that really is like, okay, how how can we act when there is a need for teacher directed instruction or like how can we be engaged listeners and then what it what it doesn't look like is saying here is what active engaged listening looks like either s t a r or s a l a n t those are not ways of right that's enforcing this top down rigid behaviorist ableist it's it just is all about precluding these conversations that's the context for the setup so here's okay. the actual Set setup up. you've looked at data points before Percentage Correct. of students who strongly agree that they are learning things interesting at school, having fun at school, or that they get to do what they do best every day. Um, this is from that same Gallup student poll we address a lot from 2016. We know that there is a massive engagement cliff from fifth grade, which honestly, fifth grade's even still pretty low. Less than half of kids say that they have fun at school in fifth grade, which is not good. Right. Um, but this plummets. Like once you start middle school, we're going down to 20%, 10%, 17%, 18%. Yeah. Um, like it's not good, right? 
plus th this is a, a poll measuring hopefulness engagement and whether or not people describe themselves as thriving um and success ready which is determined by Gallup here is our students who said all three. I also wanted to add the international context. I just saw this one related and it, it was just worth noting this is not just a US thing. They also surveyed Australian students, 48% said that they were hopeful, which is interesting because 54% of US students said that they were hopeful. Wow. The hard part is that we don't have, I mean, we, we have post big scare quotes, COVID mental health crisis data, right? So it's hard to replicate some of the same stuff and like what a post pandemic world looks like, we know how much that has heightened sort of all of these issues with engagement, hope, um, mental health, et cetera. A couple more. Um, this is from Castle, like the Castle framework, a survey showing again, like stress and boredom. And then finally, probably most importantly, stress and anxiety rates are up a lot. Um, this is a more yeah. recent poll here. This is 2021. So yes. obviously learning and well-being during COVID. So yeah, this, this right. kind of tracks with the more modern data. Right. So obviously like the pandemic has exacerbated existing issues. Um, and we've seen a spike in stress, anxiety, depression. So all of that to say, like, that's the setup for examining, well, how is teach like a champion addressing of engagement, anxiety, depression, lack of hope for the future. This is published in October, 2021. Um, mm. For what's new in Teach Like a Champion 3.0, the rebrand, oh, I, I want to highlight two things. The first is that there's a greater emphasis on DEI, diversity, equity, inclusion, which is mm. fascinating because every analysis I've ever seen of Teach Like a Champion has always been that it is egregious for students of color. Like this is specifically targeted to reinforce racial stereotypes about what it means to learn that the teachers tended to be mostly white and the students tended to be mostly black and brown. And that's not by coincidence when it comes to like the charter school industry and just how all this stuff plays out. Doug Lamov writes, many of the techniques are almost twice as long as they previous as they were previously. So I could explain the connection more clearly. They also renamed techniques to make their emphasis and purpose clearer. The second part, is that they're now putting out these keystone videos of which we're going to watch today. He said that before, you know, they only had these small moments. In this version, there are now longer running clips that show 10 minutes or so of a lesson relatively uncut. So you can see okay. how they build a larger ethos of love and rigor. <laughs> these videos we're going to watch are specifically chosen by the man, Doug Lamov himself, to demonstrate how they're tackling social justice, how they are implementing these techniques to address these concerns. So this is one of the uh, videos. Apparently this is highlighting uh, starting class. It's at a, at the Nashville classical charter school. Okay. Um, some red flags there, but okay. Yeah. This is post pandemic and it's in discussion for to kill a mockingbird. A masked up um, at least. That's interesting. Yeah. Interesting. I'm surprised it's not banned. Take So far, it just, I mean, this seems like most classroom practice, probably. I'm glad the audio quality is super strong. This this looks a lot just like, you know, the, the I do, you do, we do kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. This, this doesn't strike me as being egregious. Um, it is funny to me, though, that they said they wanted to add additional context so they weren't going to do cuts. But they're just like not showing anything it's just showing yeah, the like, kid i mean i guess he's walking not, around the room I'm sure i'm not sure what i'm supposed to be seeing here <laughs> probably something we should signpost here is the fact that right of course with these knowledge organizers in which in all these other kind of knowledge-based curricula it's all geared towards getting kids towards a particular answer um, so right. If it, in the most efficient way possible. So this of course is kind of about managing 
time efficiently. He's got the timer. Students are, you know, on task with this particular piece of knowledge, right? They're working with a particular like menu of options here that they're going through and trying to do that in the most efficient way that they have with the time that they've got. Should I like skip ahead? Are we going to get to anything else besides this? Let's see. I don't know. This looks oh, like every they take lesson out I've ever paper. seen. Trying to see what the final piece of punctuation to your response. Make it to you make sure you have that full and complete sentence. Thanks for using work time wisely. We took five minutes, we filled out a worksheet, and then we spent, I don't know, about ten more minutes, it seems, answering questions on the worksheet. But all right, like what I get, and I know this is like a super typical school experience. But like, this is why school sucks. <laughs> like the fact that we see this and go like, oh yeah, this is just school. Showcases just how bad it is because this shouldn't be the norm. This is brutal. That's fair. That's I fair. couldn't imagine going back and doing this because this was a lot of what my school experience was too. It's also very funny to me. Could they put this kid any closer to the screen? I mean, may maybe he like has like four fingers. Like, maybe I shouldn't say that. But if that's like not, intentional that's very funny to me that like this kid is seated so close to the front of the room but if we bring it back to just like first yeah. principles like why would you use a pedagogy like this it's like, well because i'm gonna teach to kill a mockingbird and kids need to know x y and z in this and we have three weeks to do it in and we're gonna do it in the most efficient way possible which means taking out any student voice and choice you know, giving them the models and exemplars and walking them through the worksheets, making sure they all have the right answer. So that way, right, no time is wasted in, in the process here. It's also just weird. The language to me is just so, it's so robotic. Like, yeah, the teacher spends no time sending students in the silent solo, followed by a scan from the corner to make sure they've all started. He walks the aisles with minimal narration. Moments later, he's inviting a student into the front row with a conversation with a data-driven pre-call. <laughs> well, everything, it just, it everything so lavish. Yeah. Everything in the Teach Like a Champion uh, extended universe uh, has to be, <laughs> it has to have like a name and it has to have a formalized process because again, you're deploying these strategies and tools like you're hitting a hotkey. Right. It's like, OK, mm -hmm. boom, then I did the data driven pre-call. Boom. I hit the, that hot key. Here's the you know inputs and outputs. I put this input. Here's what I got out of it. I hit this input. Here's what I got out of it, because to where they have to explicitly call out the four actions as encourage, as in you got this and can't wait to see those answers <laughs> and appreciate. Well, those are things like good teachers just do. It's, yeah, not, it's nothing is, egregious. It's just boring yeah. as all get out. Like to me, this is just yeah. doubling down on the things that already sucked about school and now yeah. making it even more explicitly sucky. I'm not sure to whom that video would be a revelation. Like who watches that and says, oh, my God, I've, oh, well, I, you know, the people that are hired by classical charter schools that might not have teaching degrees. Um, yeah. I mean, isn't like teach like a champion, like an empty pedagogy generally aimed at like people who didn't get a teaching degree or are like being employed to fill teacher shortages. Like to me, right. that's that, that is the, that's what's so know. weird. It's just this, this looks just fairly bog standard. I don't, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm bored. Something All right. So this one is, yeah, this one has a video too. Um, okay. This one might be better. I'm, I'm hopeful about it. It says turn and talk, which is a classic teaching technique. I mean, I've used turn and talk. I mean, the, the idea of, you know, you just, you have the kids talk to your, each other about were your it kids all wearing the same color shirt and tie. Uh, yeah. Again, like the, the language is so weird to me. It boosts participation ratio. Like, can't you just say more kids participate? Do we have to say right. also, is this another to kill a mockingbird example? This is a different school. I thought it's at the same school. Yeah. This is Brianna. This is a different person. Everybody's got to read to kill a mockingbird, man. This, okay, is, this is the United idea. States. That's we all DEI, have to read it. That's the DEI but element we, of Teach Like a Champion 3.0. We, we have uh, to read the book, but never implement its lessons. We never have to actually do anything about it. Well, let's see how, how this one goes. Oh, do they all have the same timer? Timers are very important. You're, you're efficiently managing your time. It's educational tailorism, remember? It's scientific management for 
for the classroom. This this uh, uh, the Taylorism refers to you know like the 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 factory lines, right? You have to yeah. time every task and and reduce waste and maximize efficiency. But to, you know, like you're turning a knob on the input to, to increase the output. This right. is what they're. B. S. Skinner doing. and uh, Taylor would be was it Frederick Taylor would be yeah, stoked it's at yeah. this. Yeah. One minute to turn and talk. Share what you respond with your face partner go so the thing that's interesting is like this one minute is such a risk right to the teach like a champion model this one minute is such a is such a, a risk for their their efficient management that they have to put these disclaimers on it you know that kids may use the time inefficiently kids may kids may mm -hmm. and with I the mean, reality it's super is inefficient because the kids have to talk to each other and they don't. Oh have yeah, it. I mean they're have all that. stupid. So why? Yeah. Could, I mean the teacher's the only one that knows anything. One minute is also very fast for a turn and talk activity. Even for like younger kids, one minute is like that's not a long time. Yeah, uh, I would say like at Good least luck. three to five minutes at minimum. These videos must be doing a much more deliberate job of uh, trying to balance out the racial dynamics. Like I'm sure in the old Teach Like a Champion videos, right? There are black teachers and black students, and they just didn't get caught on film. Whatever. I'm not saying that like it's deliberately designed that way but there is some intention here that they've felt um the criticism from saying okay all of our old videos have you know primarily white teachers and primarily black students the last two videos have had you know teachers of color and students of color um but in these charter kind of environments uh so it's kind of interesting should i even bring anyway. up the the uncommon schools reports i'll put them on screen and post i mean the reports by teachers i mean they have reports from students as well but the reports by teachers that teach in on common schools the horror stories that have come out about how they're treated and the issues with social justice are so commonplace that it shocked me coming across that instagram account let's think of the hierarchy right the teachers control mm -hmm. the kids the teachers are controlled by administrators right they're another cog in the in the taylorist thing if they deviate from the script or take two minutes instead of one then they're behind Right. They're behind right. the rest of the classes because they spent two minutes talking about this topic instead of one. If you want to know why, like our engagement rate and boredom rates are so I just look at the facial expressions of I'm pretty sure every single person in this still they all look absolutely miserable. Yeah. And it doesn't it doesn't look like like a like sometimes like when you're doing things that are challenging, you might have like a certain expression because it's you know, it's it's difficult. But this doesn't look difficult. It looks like everyone is struggling to stay awake or even just like care. I think it's pretty possible in these cases too. I mean, again, to refer to the factory model, which I know some people might disagree with that, but right, it's possible. I've, I've done manual labor jobs where you can pretty much just turn your brain off and go through the motions because you've done them all before. You don't really have to think. It's on, you're on autopilot because you've been through this a hundred times. It's worth noting that this idea of like track the speaker is still heavily enforced in teach like a champion slash like uncommon schools. Let's let's bring this back back to behaviorism is ableism. Like one of the things about a lot of charter schools um, is that they don't have to, um, and a, a lot of times they can't accommodate uh, kids with disabilities. Um, so you know probably this is a, a group of kids that may be differentiated in their academic like achievement or something, but. Um, probably not a lot of um, disability or neurodivergence allowed at the table. And again, I mean, it's just another example of like traditional school on steroids. It just yep. seems really boring because of the way yep. that the chairs are set up. I would predict that this is a very common practice. It looks like they have a packet of resources. They go through that packet of resources. Even the way their desks are set up are standardized. I mean, look at the actual setup of like how they have their papers and their laptop and their pencils. Like they all have their laptops at the same position on each desk. They're all like in this middle, like center forward part, all yeah. of their papers, except for this one kid, it looks like has got moved, but like, they're all like directly in front of them, their pencils all to the side. Yeah, it does make things more efficient, but there's a certain human element that's missing there where it just, it all just feels so controlled and, and sterile. Let's go to the, the next one. one. Um, oh, interesting. Cool. Look at the class size there. Um, Jeez. Also, um, oh no. I, I have to point out on the left side there, 
grit time yeah that's <laughs> we, what I was we've been trying to move away from like the language of grit i feel like in most educational circles we are fully embracing it hands down level zero which i assume means quiet um move on and star i don't know what that is oh star like what well, like slant like star check the speaker it's either above the tv she's got the uh pupils will be able to so then they have the they have yeah. the objective right above where their eyeballs are going to be so they just know it at all times, right? There's yeah. no deviating from the from the task. Esperanza, that ringing. things would get better, but I actually want you to take a look. I love the hands. I want you to take a look really quick at what Marvin said. Marvin said, but Esperanza was still arguing with Miguel that things would not get better. Things would not get better. I see a lot of agreeing. Um, what was her opinion? What was her opinion? Trek Cedric. Okay, so wait, while yeah, somebody's talking, they have to be doing jazz hands? I think that's kind of like snapping. What's weird about it is, again, like it feels so forced. Like, watch this kid, like right here in like the um, the foreground. When this kid starts Shorter talking, thing. like right here in the front, like is look at his facial expression. <laughs> he's just like, he's doing it just to do it. We're doing the jazz hands, but it's just compliance. It, it's yeah, it's it the appearance a... of engagement, right? Because you can film it like this and say, okay, the kids yeah, did all their the hands. And again, maybe it's just like concentration, but like the kids just don't look happy. This is fine. It just, you know, yeah. it's, it, it is, is it is what it is. Uh, so next one here, I got one more after this one. We got Gabby Wolf's Dr. Jekyll lesson and reading fluency. So we are going to read the beginning of chapter four. It is the one that oh, is called the Karu murder like case. So can you have your text in front of you, please? Our time is going. Okay. And we're going to focus on the gory details of this murder. And in the spirit of being sensationalist, we want to read it as we would probably have imagined Stevenson would want his readers to imagine it as they are going through this story. So I'm going to start off, and then I would like a few of you to volunteer with your highly expressive reading. I know some people who would make a very good job of that. So here we go. Nearly a year later, in the month of October 18 dash. All right, I got the idea. Teacher reads. <laughs> this is a video of the teacher reading. Okay, so I was going to read, but this is the bit we really need to be overly sensationalized. Decide who's going to read. I want expression. Off you go. Oh, okay. So now they're reading to their their shoulder partner. It looks like. I mean, it's a lot like the other one. It seems yeah. like reading has All been right. a really big focus of the Teach yeah. Like a Champion 3.0. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, I mean, come on. Yeah. Learning loss. She, what did she do? we got to recover the learning loss. Put your hand up if you know. Don't just whisper it out because it's unhelpful. Fatima. Good. She faints. She's so shocked. She's so frail as well. And you know what? Like, this This is this is not offensive. You know, this is... But but I think what is, what is frustrating is that this often gets um, characterized as, like, the only way that kids can learn, mm -hmm. that schools can and should function. And it's like, no, they can be like this some of the time, like certainly. Right. I mean, it is worth noting that th th this is claiming that it's showing the fact that kids like reading and take pleasure in it. And this is like that Susan Engel study 101. How do we know kids like and are engaging in learning? Well, their hands are up and they're participating. And that's not what it, <laughs> that's not what engagement or enjoyment is. I mean, right. if you force kids to participate, through disciplinary action and like calling kids out that's not we're just measuring compliance there's nothing to do with taking pleasure in it all right you got another one for us yeah i got one more is it another reading one i don't know this is habits of discussion it might be another reading she one rushes it this um, is written like a daily wire uh clip crushes habits crushes of discussion the habits. i'm surprised none of these are talking about the woke agenda we could have a whole separate thing on uh the fact that Doug Mob is also like a part of like the anti-CRT circles and stuff, but. Oh, I hear those pencils coming down. Zion is back and saying her hands are folded. Sarah is back and saying her hands are folded. We're gonna have a discussion. I'm gonna set the timer for four minutes so that we don't spend too much time. 
super quick. I love it that the timer is set to four minutes so we don't spend too much time, not we're gonna send the timer for four minutes for this positive purpose. That to me I'm seems like I'm not gonna like go back to the previous one, by the way, but I'm pretty confident that's the same timer that someone else uses it's like this I, it seems like like the teacher like a champion starter pack like they have this right. massive timer so that people can see it like it's huge right uh all right. while i'm calling on teammates to share i want to see habits of discussion either agreeing disagreeing or building on our eyes are locked because this is an opportunity locked yeah. by what you heard i think i it's loud because i think i heard you say that christy is being free is that what you said mm-hmm Oh, so then I disagree with you, Joseph, because she's, Percy's not being brave because... These are younger kids, so there's actually, like, a little bit of engagement here. <laughs> like, these kids in the front row are, like, really into this argument right now. Uh, yeah. It's just, it, it's one of those things where, like, can you have 20 minutes of teacher-led activities that look like this in your classroom? Of course you can. But right. this doesn't have the systemic element of, this is what Teach Like a Champion wants every single day and every single class for every single minute. Like the whole right. concept of like a gallery walk. If you want to do like, like a really teacher centric planning, like a gallery walk or a, a student presentations, sure, uh, a game, you know, something that you're like planning out that's not efficient, they're not going to do it, right? It's yeah, all yeah, yeah. read from the text, answer the question, move on, packet, worksheet, test move on and don't even think about like project-based learning i mean this guy hates project-based learning or any concept like it very so, very inefficient <laughs> like it's it's ironic because like i think this video is gonna be really boring because these videos are boring like i just right. can't imagine like doing that. like it's just so boring like there's a reason like yeah. look at this, this chart again this is the average i would love to know if there was any data out there about like what is this i have fun at school or i get to do what i do best every day or i learn something interesting what those right. stats are for uncommon schools like all i can think about while i'm watching these clips is uh is what was uh hurt vista um talks about the beautiful risk of education okay and so he breaks down um, education serving three real functions, right? So he says socialization. So that's the representation of culture, tradition, and practice. There's qualification, which is transferring knowledge and skills deemed valuable by society. But then there's this third part too, which is subjectification. So that's the, the process of becoming a subject, the freedom of human beings to act or refrain from acting. And in order to do in order to achieve that third goal, Bista argues, right, you have to engage in what he calls the beautiful risk of education. So you actually have to give kids the, the freedom, the ability to take action or to avoid taking action and then to be able to engage them in the process. It's interesting to note that when they've done this 3.0 rebrand, at least as far as I can tell, the keynote, the keystone videos that I can access on here, I would imagine it's potentially intentional to only include the reading instruction clips and not all the more disciplinary clips. Because the old Teach Like a Champion 2.0 videos that you can find online talk a lot about like, what do you do if a kid doesn't follow this model? Older videos don't have that. They have like this awkwardness to them that feels extra. Doug Lamov sees this as teachers whose version of social justice includes hiding, uh, holding high expectations for the student. We love to feel clear and confident about how to accomplish that. So like they see this as DEI work, um, especially since it's mostly applied to black and brown students. I mean, if you look at the the, the demographics of the classroom. Yeah, the thing that I, that I get frustrated by, and I've mentioned this before pretty often, but you know, in my own teaching experience, I would get frustrated when my colleagues would would say that, oh, we need to teach these kids executive skills. They lack executive skills, and. But at the same time, they didn't want to turn over decision making and choice and all those other things to kids. And they were the same people um, oftentimes and probably, you know, teach like a champion. Doug Mom is probably like this, that kids get better um, through practice. Well, the same thing works for executive function, too. You're going to get better at decisions, making decisions by making more decisions. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, I know that they have really good college acceptance rates. Um, and higher than average oh, okay. test scores. And the question okay. I have is one, at what cost? And again, like there's yeah. so many stories about how this negatively impacts kids. I'll, I guess I'll just end with this random article I found. It was like a horror movie. Um, oh no. 
It didn't take long for the first year teacher, Erica Smith, to start feeling uncomfortable the way staff treated children at the Charter Network Uncommon Schools. At Institute, the paramount focus was on controlling students' bodies. They described it as right. behavior management that was needed to work this curriculum. Without the controlling students' bodies, the curriculum does not work. Right. And then Fair. getting into the, the, how do you enforce it? Shoving children's chairs, adjusting their bodies, getting in their faces to yell at them. Um, the teachers right. were nearly all white at the time, uh, and the students nearly all black or Latino. Teachers would physically go around and hold children in the position they're supposed to be sitting in. We were instructed to talk to them like police. It was like a horror movie. Yeah, uh, links to the same Instagram account that I had shared before where it's just like the number yes. of like people sharing about just how terrible this was. She would yell at us saying we were too loud. We were kindergartners, so how loud could we possibly be? She would give us three warnings at lunchtime before she'd make lunch silent. One day at lunchtime, she got fed up with us using up our three strikes and made the rule that we could never talk at breakfast and lunch again. Lord and behold, Lord, and, lo and behold, this rule was only dismantled about one or two years ago when a father to a student came to give his student something for lunch and realized his child wasn't speaking. It reminds me of when we had Joanne Go Gohan um, on our Go podcast, man. he was in one of, yeah. it wasn't necessarily an uncommon school, but a school like that. Uh, right. not no excuses. Book. I'm going to butcher the number, but it's something like there were 18,000 detentions given in one year. And basically like no kids never got attention. These kids are just constantly forced into um, just these terrible what situations. Look like, what does this look yeah. like when the camera is off? Yeah. Control the of the school's black policies black. at the time were so rude and broken windows policing, and it was really hard to believe that the school was for black and brown children. Students yeah. were treated like prisoners. Teachers were made to go around and pull on the arms of kids to make sure they were in the proper position. Um, if you give the kids an inch, they will take a mile. Kids were treated like cattle and spoken to in very inhumane ways. Uh, wow. I was told not to smile or laugh with my students until November or December. I was forced to make my student cry for small childlike behaviors. And here's the deal. They are small. They are childlike. They're going to make childlike misbehaviors. Yeah. And not even think about like this one. Like one person told her her teacher outed her as bisexual to her parents. We didn't even get into like, what about all the other stuff going on at school? I mean, yeah. it, right. It, 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 I couldn't imagine how these schools deal with like LGBTQIA rights, uh, the concept of critical race theory. I mean, it's yeah. it's worth noting that the classical education curriculum is one of the curriculums that's being pitched slash like being discussed as Florida's official curriculum in the same place where they've banned talking about critical subjects because it's way safer um, to just have kids repeat the talking points of the worksheet. Um, ironically, I do think that To Kill a Mockingbird is banned in Florida. So maybe they had to redo some of their videos. Well, I think I'm glad we ended on this because, right, a, a lot of people might watch those 3.0 videos and ask, like, what's the big deal? Kind of like I was, right? Like, hey, it, in small doses, three minute, 10 minute, 20 minute chunks, if this is a, a represents a portion of your experience of the school day, okay, right? But then what happens when the camera turns off? How do you get kids to, you know, trained to look like this. Um, and what does that mindset instill, you know, in them as far as being on the receiving end of an education? They're, they are the objects of education. And we can do things different, which is why we're around. <laughs> that's, that's like our whole thing. Like this is like it at its most extreme on one end. And we're trying to basically be the antithesis to that. Um, this is a very intensive uh, model that to me is scary like this freaks me out it's very dystopic i am fine being the anti teach like a champion if i'm being real honest so what do you think about teach like a champion leave your comments as an educator as a student in the comments below and remember to like and subscribe so youtube will recommend our content to more people thanks for watching